Mr. Cow. Yo. Yeah, man. What's up? What's up, man? Just backing up footage from today. Nice. What you got going so on? So we got the uh, we got the footage back from the fish. Not the footage. The uh, the data back from the fish. Oh, from the tag fish. From the two tags. So we've got when our first tag, any time they've been caught since, what the length was at the time. The estimated weight, well, I think it's the estimated weight, um, and then location as well, as in where they were tagged at the time. That's rad. Why don't you start with your so, fish? I'll start with my one. So, my fish was first tagged on the 8th of May, 2013. Okay. How big? And it was, so, it was what, it's what, four years ago, five years ago, six years ago. Yeah, nearly six years ago. So six years ago, and it was 89.5 centimetres then. No kidding. So, so it was seven and a half centimetres in six years. Wow. That's it. That's it. So they grow about a centimetre a year at that rate. At well, least it depends. That like, that's what's so interesting. The, there was... Another guy recently who caught a fish out of the same lake that was, I think, about 70 centimetres, and it grew like one centimetre over five years or something like that. It was, it was crazy. So it seems to be super food dependent as far as, like, they never go, seem to go backwards, but they just, their growth stunts, I guess. Hmm. But the other interesting thing was is that at least to the fisheries records, is that that fish has never been caught since it was tagged. Oh. So it hasn't been caught. Well, it hasn't been caught, ta- and people have never sent the tag information in for their records since. So that's six years, potentially. Okay. That's fascinating. But then there's your one. Okay. And he was first tagged on the 20th of May. 2005. What? So 14 years years ago. ago. 14 years ago, right? He has not been caught since. Come on. At the time of the tag, he was 101.6 centimeters. Wow. So just over an average of a centimeter per year. Like 1.2 centimeters per year. Crazy. Yeah. They had an estimated weight at that time of the tag, which to me seems off. So that's why I don't think it's a real weight. Um, They're saying 29 kilos at 101. Okay. Which to me typically doesn't sound right. 29 kilos, what is that? Like seven, uh, 68 pounds, or no, 70 Six, pounds, I think. 63.93 pounds. So, yes, 64 pounds, yes. To me, that, if I had to guess what your fish was when you caught it, I would have said 60, 65, maybe. And they're, they're esti- well, they're, I'm assuming they're estimating 29 kilos at that, at that, uh, at that time. What did you think? You held it up. Man, it's, it's hard to say when you hold up fish of that kind of size. They're just mm. oddly shaped. And as many yeah. other style or species of fish I've held and then like weight on a scale, that was only oh. the second one I'd ever caught. Yeah. Um, I would have definitely least, said... I think they don't weigh enough of them to, to, to know. You know, like we don't put them in the net and 
and hang them up on a scale or anything to sort of know, well, a fat meter 20 is, you know, 70 pounds and a skinny one's 50. Right. Um, and so then... sort of really just guessing and looking at some of the, you know, historical stuff where guys have actually weighed them properly. So um, it's interesting. So that fish of mine at 89.5 centimeters, they estimated it at 13 Point seven kilos, which to me probably sounds a little bit more likely. Okay. Um, so I, yeah, I wouldn't have thought that to go from ninety to one hundred one would have put on, um, you know, sixteen kilos of weight. Well, it really depends by their metrics. Stomach contents matter, right? Because what they're eating mm. is going to matter. If they're eating mussels and clams off the bottom, you got the weight of the the shells, if they're eating turtles, those things are super heavy sure. and dense. Versus if they're eating oh. birds, they're not as heavy. A carp yeah. is pretty, you know, dense uh, meal. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, there's definitely a lot of variables, but this is pretty fascinating. What a cool program. Yeah, it's really cool. And it's, uh, it's obviously been going on for a long, long time, um, back to 2005, which doesn't seem like that long ago, but yeah, 14 years is um, a long time. And then the fact that no one's caught that fish, or at least no one's caught that fish, and then Recorded. set it tagging. Mm. Most people, I think, that we've caught a fish any time since then, so it's over a metre, would have set the tag in, I think. I would. A metre fish with the tag? Is a... maybe you, might not, you might not do it because it's maybe not as interesting. Yeah. But I think at that, at that level... Um, so potentially, man, he hasn't been caught. You're the first one in 15 years. Gotcha. <laughs> That's cool. That's he was an electro cool. fish the first time. Ah, so he may potentially have never been caught. Potentially. Hmm. I'm gonna. Which I'm is gonna... interesting. And that, and that, like, oh, and that's the other thing I forgot. Oh, we won't say where exactly. Right. But where he was originally tagged. Sorry, people. Was he exactly where you caught him? Wow. So he has not moved in 15 years. And there's been obviously different water levels, floods, hmm. lots of things have gone on in 15 years and he has not moved. With, with, as in, with material, with a material distance anyway. He may have moved locations within that little vicinity, but he has not. In a different section, he's on the same bend where he was originally shot. Hmm. Shot. Dang man, that's cool. That makes you think. It's uh, it's very interesting. And then, but then this same week, I saw some information where a yellow belly had been recorded or tagged. Uh -huh. Your favorite fish, and it had swam. Oh, I've forgotten the information now, but he did swim like, it was like 1,600 kilometers or something enormous, and it was the highest that ever ever tracked from where it was originally tracked to the end. I told you it was a magnificent game fish. <laughs> hey man, the Instagram, you know, likes definitely Doesn't establish lie. that. Doesn't lie. Doesn't lie. Yeah. So, that's pretty cool, man. I just thought uh, I'd share that with you and a little bit more another piece of the puzzle certainly on on your fish which is a pretty special one and who knows maybe someone else will catch it in another 10 years time and maybe be a mere 30 and yeah we'll see. hopefully who knows? Uh, you know if it maintains its growth average of 1.2 centimeters a year gosh i mm. hope it i hope it lives another 25 30 years well and that's what we're, we're i was thinking today is that well if it took What's that? Fifteen years, fourteen years. Sorry, to get from a meter, call it a meter, to a meter twenty. And let's just say it took fifteen years to go from being a fingling to a meter. Mm -hmm. You know, that fish is thirty years old potentially. You know, uh, you know, I'm assuming they grow faster in their in their juvenile state. You know, how old is a meter forty, a meter fifty? The the the, the proper ancient, you know, you know, unicorn fish. Yeah. So. And they're in, they're in those same rivers. Um, you know, we've seen them, meter 30s, pluses, meter 40s, meter 50s. So you just wonder, you know, is that fish 50 years old? That's crazy. 
That's crazy. cool. That's super cool, man. So it'll be cool over the next uh, little while, the fish we catch and, you know, through this process and just sort of keeping the data sort of flowing just to sort of see, you know, maybe there's a genetics comes into it as well. Mm. You know, so maybe some fish just don't have the capacity to be a meter 50, maybe some are a meter 10 and that's where they max out and, you know, all stuff like that. Well, I mean, we see that here in California and the United States as a whole with largemouth bass sizes and potential, right? You have yeah. each body of water is its own micro environment with different factors, water quality, forage base, climate, weather patterns, growing seasons, fishing pressure. Uh, I can go on and on and on. And just because you have a few pieces of a puzzle doesn't necessarily mean you're going to grow giant like low 20 pound level largemouth bass it just it's very rare like all those factors got to come together in almost like a perfect way and i bet you it's probably the same with the murray cod uh, mm -hmm. especially with that kind of lifespan that window of something going catastrophically bad like that darling river system yeah right, increases and probably knocks off uh, a big portion of that older generation of fish. Um, so like you, when you were here, you know, in, in Australia fishing and we're you know, doing our best to make sure that, you know, the fish have time to breathe and we try to keep them in the water as much as we could and Not drop you know, sort of minimi minimi minimize the amount of time and the stress we put on them. You know, if you lose a fish like that, and, you know, getting a bit excited or, you know, just not being organized and that fish dies, you know, that's 30 years, you know, potentially for that fish to be replaced. Or, you know, worse, like if you get the mismanagement like we've seen, and you've heard a little bit about from some of the guys like on the, the Murray-Darling uh, system, and we have that sort of water, black water event or that toxic water event, and it wipes out like hundreds of them. You know, that's a 20-year that's a process to get back to that point. Dang, that's brutal. You know, so... That just just shows you know how important it is, um, you know, to look after look after not just the big fish but the little fish and just the whole waterway, you know, in itself. Absolutely. Well, that's cool, man. Uh, I'm fired up. Uh, I wanna I wanna see what happens to that fish next because you can we can track this online, right? In the progress and well, history yeah, of this we've fish. Yeah, we've got the numbers now, so okay. we can just score the tag numbers and like. I don't know, maybe even like once a year, build, build, build a bit of a database or something, and we can maybe just check in with the with the um, the fishing body or the fisheries here, and and just sort of say, look, hey, has this been fish been caught again? You know, that was super cool when I when I contacted them. So we can just take some tabs and just see if it's been caught again. Who knows? Super cool. Yeah. Man, oh, you're man. making me want to come back. <laughs> I just left. Fifteen hour flight, no big deal. Happy to have you back anytime. Uh, Fifteen hours is fine. Maybe I'll wait till it gets a little bit warmer. <laughs> yeah, so you got a couple of months. Oh uh, man, well enjoy winter, my man. Um, if you get too cold, you're more than welcome to come visit in the states. Sounds good. All right, brother. I'll check in with you later. Yeah, Peace. Talk to you soon. Bye. Thank you. So that was my man Cal. Uh, he is part of the Big Bass Dream Team down under in Australia. Uh, lots of interesting information. And he was fortunate to catch a tagged fish at 97 centimeters. I was extremely fortunate to catch a, a 121 that also had a tag. Uh, and it's always nice to see the governing bodies and whoever's in charge of the fisheries uh, implement these kind of programs. And the hopes of growing the sport and the opportunities for everybody to go chase the fish of a lifetime. So anyways, if you guys enjoyed that conversation, this little in-depth uh, peek into stuff beyond the actual fishing, leave a comment below. Do you find it as a potential learning opportunity? I know I did. Uh, what do you guys think, man? Stay tuned, please. Thank you guys for watching. Subscribe to the channel. And hit the like button, turn on not notifications. Uh, we gotta grow this channel, guys, so we can get more resources and assets to up our level of production and frequency 
and bring bigger and better content to you guys from all over the world. Like, how crazy is that? I just finished putting some today where I grew up, 15 minutes from my house, and had a good day. And just last week, we were fishing Murray Cod, something I never thought I'd be doing. Mind blown. <laughs> but anyways, uh, make sure you guys subscribe to Big Bass Streams uh, uh, here on YouTube. Follow Big Bass Streams Australia on Instagram and Facebook. And stay tuned, I will be working on a brand new documentary, uh, probably 45 minutes to an hour long, encompassing the two weeks that I got to spend in an amazing place with amazing people, chasing an amazing fish. So we'll have uh, more information for you guys through the Big Bass Dreams Australia platforms as that project continues to evolve. All right, y'all. Peace out.